Hi, I'm Libba Bray, and I am the author of Diviners. The area of research is, I mean, I, first of all, I'm a complete research nerd, and I'm untrained, so, so that's a dangerous combination. Um, I am, as I always say, when the, tough get, when the going gets tough, the tough get a librarian. And so all praise, glory, and honor to librarians and libraries. Uh, I find that the, the re, there's a fair amount of research that I need to do before I begin working on the world because um, I think that we often think that research is this sort of like tedious, laborious process and it, it, it certainly is time consuming, but it's actually really liberating because the more you know, the more that opens up opportunities that you, you, know, you might never have seen before. And so I feel like the research is, is ongoing. So there's a fair amount that I do. I, I kind of work from the macro to the micro. So I, I want to know sort of like global stuff. And then there's what I call the six degrees of Kevin Bacon of research, where you know one little thing makes me go, ooh, X makes me want to know about Y. And then you know I scurry over here and find out about Y, and then I'm like, ooh, shiny thing over here. And, um, and that, you know, so there's like, it's like building a web. And, and I, I have terrible retention, so I have to take notes and then I'll be like, wait, what was that? My, my favorite story actually about diviners is that here I am like researching all of these trends and all of these things that were going on in these, like the labor movement and immigration law and, and you know, folklore and all of these things. And then the copywriter sends me a note. Now I've lived in New York City for 20 years. She said, Libba, the Bowery does not run east-west, it runs north-south. And I said, having lived off the Bowery for two years, she would have thought I'd know that, but no. I think there's a lot about the 1920s that's very exciting to us. And, and you know, some of it is, of course, we're sort of drawn to this idea of the glamour. It was really, uh, in many ways, I think of it as sort of the first modern age in the way that we think of a modern age. There was so much progress that was happening. And of course, you know, you have all of this freedom juxtaposed with all of this restriction because you've got, um, you know, we talk about the flappers and we talk about this sort of uh, really, we have an idea of this sort of hedonistic lifestyle and believe me, there was a lot of that going on. Um, and at the same time, of course, you know, you've got prohibition, which is a, a, an incredible restriction. There was also so much, I think, going on politically and things that we, I think, sometimes tend to have a collective amnesia about because it was really a time of, um, you know, there was a lot of immigration restriction and the 1924 immigration law, which uh, really sort of was quite draconian. And there was a lot of the sort of a surge of nativism, you know, because you've got the rise of the KKK in the early 1920s. Um, and so there was really a lot of ugly stuff that was going on as well. A lot of, um, a lot of I think there was a lot of reaction to World War I. People were a bit jaded. There was a, a complete rebellion of the Victorian morals that had come before. I think people felt betrayed by that. There was the rise, I mean, there would be no Mad Men without 1920s advertising because that's when we really start to get into that sort of aspirational advertising. This is what you should be. Are you keeping up with the Joneses? Don't you want to be part of the smart set? So I think it's just the fact that there is this juxtaposition of great progress and great blossoming and at the same time, a lot of regression and a lot of a lot of fear, a lot of people were really holding on with their fingernails because they thought we're losing those traditional American values. I mean, you think about the Scopes trial and how much fear that engendered. Um, and yet, even as I say those things, we think, well, where are we today? Those, you know, we just keep having to sort of learn those lessons. There's always that constant push-pull of progress and regression.